Good morning, lovely friends. How are you all today? I do hope you're well. I seem to have the remnants of whatever <laughs> it is that's made me feel so low for a week now. Um, I've got a bit of a cough and a bit of a snotty nose, so if I cough, I want to cough now, or if I have to blow, sniff or blow my nose, you just have to forgive me. But you know, um, I had kind of two options today. I could either stay at home curled up on the sofa under a blanket um, or get outside and do some gardening. And you know what, I think a bit of fresh air and hard work will do me the world of good. I'll see how it goes, you know. If I'm feeling really, really low, I'll stop for the day, but I don't intend to. So, um, yeah, it's like I was saying in the other video, I can't remember where I'm at with videos at the moment, but, you know, it's just that time of year that it's, it's constant, <laughs> just constant seed sowing and, and bed prep and la 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 la. So, today, I think... I'm going to open up another bed, but rather than cover it, like with some of the beds I've been opening them, but then covering them again because I'm not ready to start seeding yet. This one I'm going to open up, I've got some things to plant in it and some seeding to do. Um, I'm going to get the covers off the onions and get those mulched, but here's the thing. So last time I was with you I was speaking about the fact that we were supposed to have three days of rain and uh, didn't happen just didn't happen we had on that what that one day we had a little bit of drizzle but that was it so i think today with the onions where i'm going to mulch them with the the grass i think what i'm going to do first i'm just going to have to use some water from our water tanks i want to give them a really really good soaking and then get them mulched because honestly i don't think that drizzle will have done anything but what I do tend to do before I water anything, I just give my finger a little wiggle in the soil because sometimes, and I think this is especially true of my clay soil, sometimes I can come to the garden and it looks, it looks really dry, really, really bone dry. But actually, quite often, just an inch down and there's moisture there. So I'll never water, I never ever water without first checking the soil because obviously if, there's, if, if it is wet and moist down there, I'm not going to water, I'm not going to waste water. I'm going to see if the water butt has got anything in it. I don't see it happening though after just drizzle. Anyway, that will happen today. I'm also going to show you <laughs> progress with the planking of my carrots and parsnips. And I think I've cocked up a bit. I'll show you out there so I can sort of... Oh, my tummy just did a massive rumble. Could you hear that? Yeah, anyway, I think, um, yeah, I think I've cocked up a bit, but I'll, I'll show you and see what I can do to <laughs> rectify. Right, well, I think first things first, I'm gonna go and get that bed open. I'm not going to show you. You saw me doing it the other day, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, with the first of the cathedral beds opening it. So, fingers crossed, it's as easy to open up as that one. Um, either way, I'm sure it'll get me warmed up a bit because it's not feeling that warm at the moment. What does my thermometer say? Shed, shed, oh, no, no, no. The shed thermometer says 16 degrees, which is 62 Fahrenheit. It's perfectly warm enough for the plants and stuff. It just feels a bit chilly for me. Ooh. Anyway, let's go and get on with things in the garden. Come on. Right, well that's this bed prepped. Oh, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna go slow today. So all I've done is the prep. Obviously I took all the old cardboard off into the compost bin, the brown bin. There was still quite a lot of there was still quite a lot of leaf litter, but it's the stuff that I didn't ever strim down. So I've raked it off, I'm gonna strim it down really fine and then I'm gonna put it back on as a mulch once things have got through. So then I've just given the surface a 
a bit of a tickle, not too much of a dig, a bit of a tickle. I've given it a load of chicken manure, the, the little pellets, rake it over, and now it's time to start building again. Um, this is going to be for peas, so, so brittle, because they've not got much weight to them, and they need something to cling on to. And we're going to use these old willow sticks, um, yeah, in a, in a sort of, that's not going to stay there, I need both hands in a bit of a V formation, too short, yeah, all the way along. before I get planting and sowing the gorgeous peas of which I have, I can't remember how many varieties, maybe three? But yeah, the thing with peas is, for support, they've got their little tendrils, just like the sweet peas, and oh, <laughs> snapped another one, and they need something to grip onto. Quite often you see people use plastic netting, but, you know, if we can find a way to do it without the plastic, even better. Will I have enough? I'll improvise. Well, I'm just about ready to start planting and sowing. Get comfy. Um, so, peas, right. Well, I started a load off in pots. When was it? The 23rd of March. So that's basically four weeks ago. Four and a bit weeks ago. So I, I'll show you, I'm gonna change the camera angle in a minute to show you, because I can't get every <laughs> shot in one go. But So I'm gonna plant these in about half a row, and then the same variety, so I didn't say the variety, did I? It is Kleiner Rhinelanderin. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. They were actually gifted to me. I've never grown them before. But yes, yeah, so I'm gonna do half a row with these that are in the pots. I've got 12 pots and then I'm going to finish the row off with some spare seed I've got almost to the end of the row and then right on that far far end just in a little clump on the end I'm going to do oh, reaching for them these St Hubert soup peas that were sent to me. They're specifically for drying. I don't normally grow peas for drying but I thought, well, you know, it's a nice addition to dried beans over the winter, isn't it? So these will get to, they can get up to five feet high. <gasps> That'd be lovely though, won't it? So I'm just gonna do a little clump on the end. And then, so that's one row plus a clump. And then the front row, it's gonna be all Kelved in Wonder, which is an old favorite. And it's the one my grandparents always grew, so. Like I always say, if it was good enough for my grandparents, it's certainly good enough for me. Right, let me move you so you can see what I've done with my little structure and how I'm going to use it. Right then, so, I'm gonna have a double row of the sticks, the supports, but before I put the second row in, I'm going to be planting these in the space, so they're going to go in little clumps, whoopla, like this, all the way along, all the way along, and then because these poles are coming slightly this way, they'll soon meet them and grab on. There should be enough, I should have made the right sort of space, fingers crossed, <laughs> yes, perfect. And then, as you can see from here, I've got the second row of canes in already. And now I'm just going to sprinkle them in. So I've made a drill about, oh, four or five centimetres deep. A 
and then I'm just going to sprinkle them in. Nothing too, not really worried about spacing. I always used to do it with a dibber, one at a time, very carefully spaced, but it's really not necessary. They'll quite happily, uh, you know, a few of them will quite happily grow in a tiddly piddly space. And pull that soil back over. Now, also, because this soil's beautifully moist at the moment, but I will, I will give them a little sprinkling of water. But also, because I don't want it all drying out too much, I've got this big bowl full of, um, this is all clippings for when I did the edges of all my paths the other day. So, I'm gonna get clumps of that in long. I'm gonna give this peas a little bit of space to come up, but essentially get all this well mulched with these clippings. Amongst the clippings there are some bits of leaves, dandelion leaves, what have you. The more the merrier. So I will do that for the rest of the row up into that point and that's where the, pea, the soup peas are going to go. Then once I've got these planted I'll put the rest of the sticks in and in front of them that's where I'll do the Kelvedon Wonder. And then I've got something else to go in this bed. So I'd better shut up and get planting, hadn't I? I'm feeling okay. Although I have to say, everything feels like a bit of an effort today. And like it's taking me longer than it would normally. But I'd rather go slowly and get it done than not to go at all or go fast and make myself poorly. Right, let's have a look, see how our roots are looking after about, oh, doesn't want to come out. Oh, I should have watered first, they're very dry. But I've got some really nice roots there. Yeah, these are all gonna need a really, really generous soaking once they're in. So it'll be really interesting to see how how soon these crop because as I said, I've never I've never ever sown peas in pots early before. Um, oh, I think I'm gonna come out easy cut. Oh look at that. Yeah, I've never sown them in pots, I've never sown them early before. And it'll be interesting to see if they actually produce before the leaf moth turns up. The pea moth, sorry. Um, yeah, and hopefully, actually, it'll be a bit of a successional crop because of that. Even as I'm doing it now, I'm wondering about delaying putting the, the Kelvedon Wonders in in order to have a succession. Do you know what? I think I'll do that. I'll get the sticks in, but I'll hold off selling my Kelvedon Wonders for a couple more weeks. And then... Also, because these are on the other side, let them all get going a bit before the Calvedon Wonders get going. Yes, that's a plan. Oopla. Right then, moment of truth. Let's see if that rain did anything at all. Oh, oh that's a pathetic stream, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I was hoping for the full one. Oh, that's going to be, if I'm lucky, that's only going to be a couple of pints of water. So, I'm going to have to resort to using water tank water. Ah, we. Let's start doing the rain dance, everybody. Yeah. Give these all a good soak. Then I can use the, um, the rest of my clippings to stuff in there as a mulch. And hopefully these guys will be happy to really start getting away. I think we're certainly warm enough 
for things to get away. It's uh, the main problem is just how dry it is at the moment. So the water box that was supposed to be three days worth of rain. <laughs> that was definitely not a three days worth of rain. <clears throat> hey ho. I mean we are lucky here and that we've got the um we do have water tanks mains water though so obviously i'd rather not but if it's a toss-up of not watering and losing plants then obviously i'm going to water need a little bit more for this end find that from somewhere else okay now i'm going to sew something either side which I'll, ex whoops, which I will explain as we go. There he is. Do you guys remember the other day I was mentioning this little feral, little feral boy who comes to see me. This is him. Hey, George. He doesn't know his name yet. He's a bit wary. Oh, you're a handsome boy. Oh, I'm so glad I can show him to you on camera. But you can probably, I'm sure, I'm sure he must be related to Rusty somewhere down the line. What a gorgeous boy. Let's see if I can give him a little nibble. Oh, good boy. Yeah, who is this? George. <laughs> A little shy, aren't you? A little bit timid. I tell you what, I'll give you your space, little care fella. I'm just going to leave some food for you. You know that old adage, how do you know if the soil's warm enough for planting? Sit on it with your bare bum. <laughs> My bum's not quite bare. So, okay, the pea plants are in, the pea, the rest of that rhyme, whatever it's called, seed are in, the St. Hubert's, the drying pit, they're all in at that end. I am going to leave this front row for now to put the Calvedon Wonder in, do it in a couple of weeks, have a bit of succession. Now the original plan with this bed is to have the peas in the middle like this and then either side have a ton more calendula. The plan then was going to be that by the time the peas are over, mid late summer, they'll come out and I'll get either one, possibly two rows of brassicas in. Remember I was saying the other day about we're always having something following on. Now, um, I don't know quite what's happened, but I've got a whole jar of calendula seed, a big jam jar full of calendula seed. I can't find it. I've got a feeling <laughs> I've given it away. Oh, silly Billy. So, I do not want to leave this soil bare. Of course I don't. So I've had a genius little plan. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll give it a go. I don't know if you remember last summer I was going to try lentils for the first time. And I did. Unfortunately, they got utterly swamped out by the squash. They were in the cathedral bed. They were under one of the squash cathedral teepees. Um... Yeah, they, they came up beautifully, but then they just got swamped out. I've got a load left over, so I thought what I'd do for the length of this bed, the whole length of this bed, is just basically scatter and scratch in a load of these lentils. Two things. One, they're going to act as a great ground cover if they come up. Um, and then... Hopefully I'll get a harvest from them, but if I don't get a harvest from them, it'll be a load of fantastic green matter that I can I can dig in. So I'm almost using it like a, um, what do you call it, a green manure. Uh, I think I've only got enough to do this side. So what I'll do on the other side, I'm not sure yet. However, oh, I need my gloves off to do seeds. However, I've been given so many different types of bean seeds this year um all the arches they're already accounted for they're chock full i've got two beds just behind you over there uh, which are going to be for bush beans 
not the cocos, they're coming here. I'm sure I've got more beans than that still left to think about finding a space for. So, perfect, I'll put them here behind the peas. And also then, it sort of makes sense in rotation. They're all the sort of the legumes or that same family. So, these are just little red lentils, as you can see. And I'm literally just going to scatter and then I'll come along and with my hand I'm just going to scratch them in a bit. I might even see if I've got if I've got a spare bit of compost I might just give them a bit of a dusting with the compost to to make sure that, I'm going to have to stand up to do the rest of this row. Excuse me a second. Of course this freshly tilled bed with chicken poo in is a massive invite to the foxes isn't it? So I'm going to net it partly for the foxes but also it will just it will just protect ever so slightly from um, from the sun in terms of evaporation it doesn't go the whole way I've actually nicked this net from the onions they are my next job but yeah I'm gonna put a net on the other side too even though I've not sown anything just to stop the foxes getting in there and digging and like I say, just to keep some of the fierceness of the sun, when we do get it, off the soil, stop it baking to a crust. Gosh, it feels like it's taken me ages to get this bed done today. Um, I'm obviously <laughs> going a little bit slowly, but great, that's a great job done. All the pea sticks are in, pea plants are in, pea seeds are in that end. This is all now seeded with the lentils. Everything's nice and wet and covered. And um, yeah, just start looking forward to seeing the first signs of, oh, that little white marker, that's to show that's my St Hubert's the drying ones. Yeah, it's a case now of just being patient and waiting for the first signs of life. But I tell you what, it's certainly, I don't know whether I'm poorly or whether it's really warm and muggy today, but I've got a little sweat tash going on. So hopefully that means it's warm enough to get the seeds germinating and get these little poppets going away and happy. Oh, right, let's go and see to those onions. So these are the red onions with their covers off. See that? Oh, happily sprouting away. I think pretty much, yeah, I think pretty much all of them are coming up and growing. So I've done the wiggle of the finger in the soil test and it's really dry for about the top couple of inches of soil or so. And at this stage in their lives, they barely have much of a root and their roots hardly go down very far at all. So just to give them a helping hand, I've given them a really good soak and now I've brought my barrow of grass clippings, what have you, over so I've got the whole of this little lot mulched, trap that beautiful moisture in and uh, yeah, hopefully they'll carry on growing happily away but they look great at the moment. They've been in uh, three weeks and it's such a beautiful, vibrant green, isn't it, at this stage? absolutely gorgeous. Now just while we're here I'm going to see if I can show you through the net. I might have to lift it off my little cock up with the carrots. Are we going to be able to see if I press you right up close? Ah no you're not going to be able to see. Hang on a tick I'm going to lift the, um, the mesh off. So I think it's clear from that isn't it what happened. <laughs> I had been checking each day but then because I stayed away for a few days probably, they've obviously all come up and uh, 
they needed to have the plank taken off sooner. Rats, I'll have to re sew some of them. Some of them on the other side are fine. And then there's the leeks, the direct sewing of leeks are all up. And skip that, that's carrots, but the next one over. That's all the direct sewing of spring onions are up. And then on the far side, there's quite a few carrots come up that haven't, that I kind of got to in time. It's a different variety, obviously. So I think, though, I'm going to have to re sew. But uh, it seems to have worked in so much as having the planks there traps the moisture, helps them to get germinating. You just need to be more on the ball with it. There's tons and tons of self seeded calendula in here, if you can see. And at this stage, while everything else is so little, I'll actually, I know it seems sacrilegious, but I'm actually going to pull them out because I don't want them overshadowing all my little teeny tiny things. And there are so many calendula seeds in here that as the weeks go on, more and more of them will pop up. So once things like the carrots, leeks, and uh, what do you call it? What are they again? Spring onions. Once they're all, you know, more established, any calendula that come up at that stage, they're all over there, I'll just leave in. Well, this is a good and pleasing job to get done today. That should really help with the moisture retention. But of course, <laughs> the law of sod means I've run out of material. But not to worry, because when I exposed the pea bed, there were a load of still a load of leaves that hadn't decomposed. There's about a bin bags worth full. So what I'll do is um, I'll charge up my strimmer battery, get those leaves strimmed down really tiny, and they can go onto the end of here. These are the reds, as I was saying. And then hopefully there'll be enough to make a start to do the same treatment. For the whites over here, uh, it doesn't look much, does it? But that's about an hour of raking here, there, everywhere. And, uh, oh, but it's so worth it though. It really, really, really will help with the moisture retention over the course of the summer. Yay, happy onions. Goodness me, I feel a bit challenged. Oh my goodness. Well, look, I wondered if I'd even get down here at all today because of this kind of underlying something that's annoying my system but I did so that's great so literally any job oh sorry wobbling you literally any little job I could get done today was going to be a bonus brilliant so the pea beds done the onions done I've done a few other little bits and pieces around and about the place I'm going to do some strimming because I need to make some more clippings mulch um, and then everything needs a really, really good watering. Um, like I said, I don't, I, I really try not to water. I don't water willy-nilly. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> I don't water me willy. Um, but the fact is, where I've got seeds in those seed beds, carrots, parsnips, leeks, spring onions, Obviously the peas have already had a soaking, all the stuff in the cold frame. These little teeny tiny starts of life, they just don't have the strength, the root systems, to get down to where the water is. So, um, for example, at the moment I'm, I'm going to hold off watering the potatoes because they were down so much deeper anyway and they are probably down a good five or six inches and I know it's moist down there so I'll hold off watering the potatoes but it's just something to bear in mind both at this time of year and any time of year really when it comes to watering stick your finger in the soil or stick a trowel in the soil pull it back and, and have a look at that slice of soil where's the moisture um, and then just think about the root systems of the various veg that you're dealing with so at this time of year, of course, we're talking about seeds and seedlings. So that because they're sitting right in the top of the soil, yes, they're going to need watering. So I'll get on with that too. And then I think, to be honest, I think that's probably going to be me done for for today. Um, I'd really love to carry on. There's so many things to be getting on with. But I'm going to be sensible because I have been under the weather. I really, really want to get back tomorrow and have another 
really good long morning, sort of four or five hours here. So I'd rather go home now, look after a bit of energy and have some for tomorrow. Because where we're at at the moment, um, I've got all the last of the beds to open. I've got direct seeding to do with various beans. I've got some backup sowings of beans to do in pots in the cold frame. I've got all my backup squash and that sort of, uh, that associated family to do backup sowings of in the cold frame. I've got to get my bean arches up. I've got to get my teepees up. There's a lot to do. <laughs> and you know, it's not, um, it's not too much to do, it's a perfectly normal amount of to do at this time of year. But it just means that uh, you definitely, and I'm saying this as much to myself as anyone else, you do need to pace yourself a bit. So, you know, if you're as fit as a fiddle and you can work in your garden for 10 hours at a stretch, brilliant, good on you. But if you're like me and three or four hours starts to hurt, then just try and you know do two or three days a week of little chunks rather than one big long day and of course the evenings are so much lighter now aren't they it's wonderful isn't it i know a lot of my friends who work um, and work away from home they get home at sort of six half six and they're so happy now because most evenings they can pop out to their gardens and have a little potter and get on with things right that's it I'm going to go and do that strimming and all the watering. I'm going to have a big old tidy up. I'm going to go home and have a nice long hot bath with a book in my hand. I'm reading a great book at the moment. I'll tell you about that next time I see you, which will be really soon again, I hope. But in the meantime, have fun out there. Have fun indoors, in, out, shake it all about. Just have fun. <laughs> and... Of course, as always, please take care of yourselves. Stay well. See you soon.